Welcome to the future of lasers at Chesapeake Eye Center. I'm your host, Dr. Todd Bizak. You may recognize me from such events as Delmarva Life, where I discussed blepharitis and pediatric eye disease, as well as Atlantic General Hospital's informational on cataract surgery. But today, we're here to talk about the lasers at Chesapeake Eye Center, both in the present and in the future. Join me as I introduce you to the different types of lasers that we use to help patients every day. So the question that begs to be asked, initially at least, is what is a laser? The term laser originated as an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. A laser is a device that takes photons, or little particles of light, and bounces them off of many mirrors inside of the device. The more mirrors it bounces off of, the narrower the beam of light gets and the more powerful it becomes. Essence, a sophisticated heat beam which we called a laser. Well, not exactly, Dr. Evil, but close. So, let's start talking about the different types of lasers we're going to discuss. There's the YAG laser, the diode laser, the selective laser, as in selective laser trabeculoplasty, the excimer laser, and of course, finally, the femtosecond laser. The first laser we're going to discuss today is the YAG laser. YAG is an acronym for Yttrium Aluminum and Garnet Laser. Specifically, this laser is used for two purposes on a daily basis at Chesapeake Eye Center. For capsulotomies, as well as peripheral iridotomies. This animation will recreate a capsulotomy of a YAG laser. The pupil is dilated to reveal a hazy capsule lying behind the intraocular lens. This is shown by the pointer. Now the laser is applied in a specific sequence that clears the central visual axis. This is a painless procedure. Oh wow, cool! <laughs> You're right, Jamie. It's darn cool. A peripheral iridotomy uses a YAG laser to create a tunnel or passage through the iris. This hole will restore normal flow of fluid in a narrow angled eye. Selective laser trabeculoplasty, or SLT, is the most common type of laser procedure performed for open angle glaucoma. During the SLT procedure, the laser is directed towards the trabecular meshwork. This is the primary drainage region of the eye. In most cases, 100 laser applications occur around the periphery of the trabecular meshwork. The SLT procedure, as animated here, allows aqueous fluid to drain more easily, resulting in lower pressure in the eye. Again, a painless procedure that is tolerated well. This laser is a diode laser. Specifically, Dr. Yonker uses it to perform suture lysis after his trabeculoplasties. Honestly, I don't know much about it, and it actually scares me quite a bit. <laughs> Next, we're going to talk about the laser that we use for LASIK. This is known as the Excimer laser, and it's really a pretty awesome laser. First of all, it was developed originally by IBM, and it was used to actually laze the silicone chips that they use in their computers. Secondly, it's an ultraviolet laser, I meaning it's completely invisible, not visible to the human eye whatsoever. Thirdly, it's a cold laser. So as much as we fire that laser in LASIK, and by the way, we also use the same laser for PRK, or photorefractive keratotomy, it doesn't get hot. Lastly, this is really cool stuff. I mean, this is like Star Wars cool. Like the lightsaber scenes with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Those are lasers. I get to use those lasers. Pretty awesome. Anyway, the way the Excimer laser works is when the laser is actually shined upon matter, it lays down something called plasma. And when that plasma coats this area, and by the way, matter is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons have a neutral charge, and electrons have a negative charge. And all those charges come together, 
in order for the molecule or the atom to stay together, they need to balance each other out. Well, when the laser applies its plasma to the matter, the electrons go poof, and they run out in all different directions. And when that happens, the matter that was there previously literally ceases to exist anymore. Meaning, when we apply laser to a cornea, the cornea actually disappears. The last thing we're going to talk about, which is really cool, is the accuracy of the Excimer laser. Is it accurate? Well, let me say that it is. In fact, the segments that the Excimer laser cuts down on the cornea is one quarter of a micron in size. That's one quarter of a thousandth of a millimeter. It's really tiny stuff. So, in conclusion, the Excimer laser, one of my favorite toys that I get to use in my professional life. Let's talk a little bit more about LASIK. When, in its purest form, LASIK can be described as flap and zap. Now, I don't think that is, is as elegant as it could be placed. However, there is some validity to the point. LASIK cons essentially consists of two parts, creating a flap in the cornea and then lasering the cornea underneath with that eczemer laser that we spoke of earlier. For the first part of my career, I used a steel keratome blade to create that flap essentially an oscillating blade that moved across the cornea to create the flap, almost like the cover of a book. Recently, Chesapeake Eye Center has adopted the femtosecond laser, a laser used to actually create the flap, and then we use the eczema laser to perform the treatment on the underlying corneal bed. How does the femtosecond laser work? I'll show you. The femtosecond laser is an extremely fast laser that applies numerous pulses of tiny yet calculated spots at an exact depth in the cornea. These pulses create tiny bubbles that form a sheet of air within the cornea. The benefits of interlace are greater accuracy, the allowing of larger percentage of LASIK candidates to have surgery, quicker and tighter healing, and lowers the complication rate. This bubble layer is then separated with a tiny instrument to lift the interlazed LASIK flap. Here is a video of live surgery during femtosecond flap creation. Notice the bubble layer being created in the shape of a circle with a hinge. That's awesome! Woo! Wow, what will they think of next? Great question, Marie. Here's what they thought of next. Combining the femtosecond technology of interlace and combining it with cataract surgery. The femtosecond laser brings a new level of customization to cataract surgery, allowing each procedure to be tailored to patient anatomy and surgeon preference. The video microscope will allow us to use the patient's eye to program laser settings. First, the capsular rexus is performed, creating a circular opening in the anterior capsule of the cataract. Traditionally, this is performed freehand by the surgeon. Although we do a great job here, the laser can make a perfect circle every time. It's important because the size and shape of the capsulotomy impacts the position that the IOL will take. Next, the laser will fragment the cataract into easily dissected quadrants for easier removal with less ultrasound energy, ultimately. Finally, the two incisions needed to manipulate and remove the cataract are created by the laser. These steps set the table for easier cataract removal by way of ultrasound energy. It's exciting times here at Chesapeake Eye Center. Thank you for joining us today on lasers at Chesapeake Eye Center. We discuss the current lasers we use and the future lasers that may come into play as the future moves forward. All of the lasers that are currently housed in our Berlin office will be moving to the Salisbury office. And the Eximer laser, our LASIK laser, will be performed there. As well as the potential for the femtosecond laser, which is very exciting for the future of cataract surgery. Thank you for joining me today. What a dork.